Hi guys and welcome to another Wargame Red Dragon tutorial video with me Bubblebox and today we're going to start talking about the aeroplanes. In this video I'm going to talk about aeroplane management, how to move them around the map and stuff like that. And in the second video on aeroplanes I'm going to talk about individual planes and their stats in the deck system. So, planes are obtained via the production menu and can be obtained during the deployment phase of the game, ready for use at the start or during the game. Now, if you do bring a plane in at the start and during the deployment phase and you change your mind, you can right click it to put it back into the production menu again. You can't do that in game, but you can do that in the deployment phase of the game. So planes are placed into and deployed from your airfield panel and in your airfield panel these planes can have three statuses. They can either be available when they're coloured, uh, coloured got sort of a coloured plane icon, they can be in a mission or they can be undergoing resupply. Your airfield can hold up to nine planes and when a plane is destroyed it will disappear from the panel leaving you an empty slot to fill if you have any more planes and enough points to put another plane in its place. The planes can be summoned to battle uh, from the airfield by left clicking, clicking on the plane and then right clicking on the terrain or on the target that you want to attack. The aircraft enter the map via a controlled air corridor, the spawn area for your aircraft. You must of course um, control the air lane to be able to do this. After a successful period of time, your aircraft will eventually run out of fuel and automatically fly back to the airport for resupply. This is called evac bingo and once refueled they will become available to you again from the airport panel. A plane always leaves the map when fuel is low, evac bingo, when it lacks ammo, evac Winchester or when it's ordered to do so by you giving it a direct command. Also note that aircraft do tend to evac in the direction of the air lane they're spawned from. So that's really important to remember when trying to micro your aircraft and get them onto the right attack vector. Now the more fuel or ammo a plane uses and the more damage it sustains, the more time it requires for resupply and refit. So for example, if you had a plane and it just ran out of fuel, it would probably be ready in a minute or something like that. Whereas if you had a plane and it ran out of fuel and it's also used its weapons, plus it's got a little bit of damage, maybe it got stunned, then it can take minutes for those planes to be ready for use again in the airport panel. Also, another useful thing to be able to do with your planes is to follow them. And I often get people saying, well, how do I follow my planes? How do you zoom in? Well, to activate the follow cam on your planes, it's really easy. You simply double click on its icon in the airport panel, panel and then zoom in using your middle mouse button. And you should be in the cockpit flying around with your plane. Now, back to the planes. After a specific, oh, after a specific period of time, so, in the stats, it's called the time over target. They will evac bingo automatically, fly back to the airport, resupply, after which they're available again. I've sort of already said that, but it's called time over target. So what about actually using your aircraft? Now, it's important to note that your aircraft act the same as any other unit in your deck. If you simply bring them in and let them fly around or just click on a target and then forget about them, you will inevitably use inevitably lose a lot of your aircraft if not all of them so understanding how aircraft handle is essential to using them successfully always be ready to evac your planes in case they run into unexpected or hidden enemy anti-air units evac immediately if your plane runs into trouble if it gets stunned it will not be able to fire on enemy so just evac it um, it will evac as soon as it recovers from being stunned if it doesn't get shot down in the meantime. Also, don't suicide expensive planes to kill cheap, cheap units. It is okay, I guess, to suicide cheaper planes to kill high point targets, but don't try to do it the other way around because it's just a waste of points. And of course, planes are very fragile. A little bit about attack vectors and for bombers, and I mean bombers and sort of napalm bombers as well, um, is that the aircraft have to fly straight at their target in order to drop their bombs. So 
If the aircraft is still turning to align with their attack vector, they won't drop their weapons and can, that can send your aircraft off in some odd direction, perhaps over enemy territory, to, in order to get itself aligned for its bombing run. Bombers, or all planes in fact, also have to be a certain distance from the air corridor to release their weapons, leaving a little area under, a little radius under the air corridor where under the spawn point where they will be unable to release their weapons upon spawning they'll have to fly out turn around and then attack the enemy so always try and keep this area clear of enemy units if if you can and that big clap of thunder is because there's a storm a brewing here now a little bit about turning radiuses when an aircraft uh, when air your aircraft are ordered to a location, they will circle around that location unless they drop their ordnance, evac Winchester, or run out of fuel, evac Bingo. All aircraft have a turning radius. Generally, the faster aircraft have a larger turning radius, and the slower ones are slightly uh, or, or a tighter turning radius, although that they are variations. That's just a general rule. The aircraft will also turn to the side where you set a move order as well with your mouse. So you can control them in that way as well. Also, remember that an aircraft with a tighter turn radius will generally, not always, but generally outfly an aircraft with a wider turning radius in a dogfight. So there are occasions when actually a cheaper, shorter ranged air superiority units can sometimes outmaneuver and kill their more expensive, long ranged counterparts so long as they can get close enough. Also, if your aircraft has an enemy shooting at it from behind, evac it immediately. Now, there's one more thing I should mention, and that's seed. Um, basically, seed and taking down enemy air defences. And I'm going to talk about that in this video rather than uh, when I talk about the individual seed aircraft. Now, it is impossible to use aircraft effectively when taking massive missile fire. Seed or suppression of enemy air defences refers to strikes used to neutralise enemy air defences to prepare for further airborne either plane or chopper attacks. This can be done with seed aircraft which have missiles that will actually target radar guided anti-air units without even having to have a line of sight on them or even being there having to be able to see them at all. When attempting to attack radar guided defense systems, don't send your seed aircraft directly at the place where you think they are, but fly them several sort of kilometers short or several or a kilometer or two parallel to the position of the radar guided defenses. Always be ready to evacuate your seed aircraft as well in case they get stunned. Another seed tactic is, of course, you can use artillery or mortars to kill or at least panic and stun enemy AA before you go in for a, for a bombing run. Always try to kill enemy AA whenever you can. Every single anti-air unit you kill will make, will make the air operations simpler and easier. So that's about it for aircraft management. I hope you got something out of this video and in the next one we're going to be looking at the individual aircraft and their stats and what they can be used for. So please do comment, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.